this video we're gonna uh, continue our exploration of using uh, De Mavre's theorem to find all roots of say uh, an equation when you solve it. So we have some fourth degree polynomial we want to solve here. Uh, and what I've asked to solve this, I suppose, uh, you know, first thing that comes to my mind is to try to factor it. And I notice that it's in quadratic form now. This is not uh, the typical quadratic form. You'll notice that it's x to the fourth minus two root three x squared plus four equals zero. And instead of having a x squared and an x to the first and then a four, we have an x to the fourth and x squared and then a four. So this is still considered to be in quadratic form. Uh, but I look at this, I say, you know, I just for life me can't think of two numbers that multiply out to be a positive four that add up to be a negative two root three. So since I can't think of these, what we're going to do instead is we'll just go to our go-to, which is our quadratic formula. Now, normally the quadratic formula says this. It says x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. Now, in this instance, you'll notice that this is quadratic. Uh, but for a squared variable type, that is, you know, we say x to the fourth, if I were to say omit the, uh, the coefficients, just make it look like this, you know, we could say that this is x squared squared plus x squared to the first plus one equals zero, where we do have a squared into the first, and our variable type is x squared. So what we're going to say here is this, not x equals all of this, but x squared equals all of this. So in this case, we get an a value of looks like one. Uh, B value of negative 2 root 3, that's fabulous. And then we say a C value of 4. So knowing these three things, we're going to go ahead and pursue this. We say x squared is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. And I'm going to fill all this stuff in now. So we have uh, B, which in this case is negative 2 root 3. You have to forgive me here. I'm going to try to squeeze all this in. Negative 2 or 3. Our a value is 1. Nice. Okay, and our c value is 4. So what we get is this. We get x squared is equal to negative negative 2 root 3, which is 2 root 3, uh, plus or minus now. We get the square root of now negative 2 root 3, all of that squared to be negative 2 root 3 times itself. So we get this. We get negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then root 3 times root 3 is 3, so we get 12. Okay, so I'm going to mark, remark that this is a 12. Uh, and then we also say this 4 times 1 times 4 is 16 and a negative times a positive times a positive is a negative. So I get negative. Ooh, so notice this. And the inside of this radicand right here, first of all, first whammy, is the fact that we're going to get a negative, uh, negative value. And so if I were to simplify this further, we know that uh, because I'm taking an even root of a negative thing, I can put an i out front. So we're going to do that. We're going to say 2 root 3 plus or minus i square root of 4 all over 2. Furthermore, we say this is 2 root 3 plus or minus 2i because the square root of 4 is 2 all over 2. And all of these 2's can be reduced uh, by a factor of 2. So we end up with this number really here. We get z equals root 3. Sorry, did I write z? I meant to write x squared. Apologize. x squared equals uh, 1 root 3 plus or minus i. So here's the unfortunate thing. We just found the roots here, but you'll notice that in order to solve this now, we have to take the square root of both sides. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So what we're going to do instead is this. When you have to take the square root of a complex number, it is impossible to do in standard form. So when you take roots of complex numbers, we say we want to do this in trig form. Okay. So in this case, we are going to take the square root of three root three to boot plus or minus i, which is the same thing as this. We're going to say that it is root three plus or minus i all to the one half power. So now what we need to do is we need to actually write this in trig form. So when we say uh, root three plus or minus i, we're going to go ahead and graph both of these numbers. So we say root three plus i. We would say that'd be like one point seven to the right and then one up. So it'd be about right here. We say here's our first complex number that we need, and then our second number would be root 3 minus i, or root 3 minus 1 i, so we'd go down here. And so we'd say these two numbers, if I want to write them in trig form, I would need to know their arguments, I need to know these, and I would need to know their r values, okay? And their r values are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and start by finding r. We would say r would be the square root of root 3 squared plus 1 squared, which comes out to be this. Uh, it's the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4 and that's 2. So we'd say that this number right here, if I wanted to rewrite this, well we could say it's at least this. We'd say 2 CIS, now some argument. 
So now what I want us to recognize is this. There were two numbers that I had here. So we're going to have to find two separate arguments. So we'd say 2CIS one argument to the 1 half power, and then 2CIS the other argument to the 1 half power. So we say, what are these arguments here? Well, we do know this. We say tangent uh, inverse of y over x is going to be our argument value. In this case, our y value is 1 up here, and we say root 3 here. So root 3 is a positive root 3 in this case. So I'm going to get my calculator out here. I'm going to say, okay, well, the square root of 3, the square root of that, uh, divided by 1, and the reciprocal of that. So we say, well, here's 1 over root 3, and then we say, okay, so I'll take the tangent inverse of this. So I get 30 degrees. So we get our reference angle here is 30 degrees. So in both of these instances, I'll draw this in here, we get a 30 degree reference angle. So what are our arguments? One of our arguments, of course, looks like 30 degrees, but the other argument was 30 degrees shy of 360, so this is going to be 330. So now here's where we get to find all of our roots. In the first possible case, that is this case right here, number one, we're going to say number one, here's what we know about it. We'd say if I'm going to do this, then I have to take two to the one half times CIS of, now our n value is two. So we're going to say 30 degrees over n plus 360 degrees over n, sorry, thinking n, but it's a two. We say k. In the second possible case, we get two to the one half CIS and we get 330 degrees divided by 2 because that was the root we were finding plus 360 degrees divided by 2 and the k goes off on the side so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna say for k equals 0 and for k equals 1 and we don't have to go to k equals 2 because we always go up to 1 less than the root we were taking here okay so we say for these two things we'll go ahead and evaluate it down here but we'd say for at least my first case when you, when you plug in 0 for k you can see how that this and this term, these two terms right here, are just going to up and disappear, and you just get left with the original angles. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're just going to interpret this now, and we say, well, number one, we would get 2 to the 1 half, which I don't know the square root of 2, so we're just going to write square root of 2, and I get CIS 30 over 2, which is 15 degrees, plus 360 degrees over 2 times 0. So that just goes away. And then when I plug in, say, uh, you know, 0 into this one down here, this term drops out. And I really get this, we say root 2 CIS, 330 degrees divided by 2 is 165 degrees. So there's two of my roots when I plug in 0. When I plug in 1 now, now this is interesting, I'm going to write in a 15 up here, that's 15, this is 165 right here. All of that and all of this. But we're going to say I would get the square root of 2 CIS, now in this case when I plug in 1, I'd say 360 over 2 times K is 180 degrees K. I'm really going to get 180 degrees times 1 plus 15, so I get 195 degrees, uh, and we say root 2 CIS, now when we go plug in a 1 down here, this is 180 degrees K as well, but we're adding now 180 degrees times 1, which is 180 degrees, plus 165, which I think uh, 345, 345 is what we get here. So suffice it to say, we could go graph all of these, and you know we would say that you know 15 degrees would be about right here. 15 degrees, 165 degrees would be uh, that would be 165 would be over here. Okay, we say 195 would be down here, and then 345 would be over here. Okay, so we found all of our roots. Cheers.